Okay, so we're now recording, so we'll pass over to Rowan. Okay, kia ora, Joanne. Kia ora koutou kato, ko tēnei te mihi kia koutou, um, i tēnei wā uh, mahuru Māori, so nō reira nō mai haramai, and uh, nō ho ora mai koutou kato. So I hope everybody is well, and thank you to Kat Sig for letting me um, present today. Um, we're going to have a bit of a um, presentation on um, we're going to go back to a little bit to the beginning of Ngā Upoku Tukutuku and how it started and why it started. And then we're going to talk a little bit about um, how we integrated the Māori worldview into the cataloguing uh, world and show you some examples of how we create terms. <clears throat> so Ngā Upoku Tukutuku is a jointly sponsored project between Te Rupi Whakahau, Lianza and the National Library. It is a thesaurus of words in te reo Māori used as subject headings to enhance the end user's um, experience. It contains over 2,000 terms now, and it was developed with a Māori framework and launched in 2006. Um, upoko uh, is defined as, a, as head, so early writers used it to identify chapters and headings. The word tukutuku is the complex activity of the weaving process where two people work together passing fiber backwards and forwards to each other. Uh, this analogy was adopted for how the words are woven into the structure of the thesaurus, weaving te ao Māori with the hierarchy of a thesaurus and the world of cataloging. So in the 80s, and that seems like a long time ago now, but in the 80s, um, researchers scholars and um, academics um, had discussions on how hard it was to search uh, catalogues from institutes and libraries using te reo Māori. So they were frustrated by the fact that they knew there was material um, in libraries, but they couldn't access it. And so that um, created the movement for change. And in 1998, a Māori subject headings working party was created. Then in 2005, the steering group of National Library, uh, Lianza and Tōpū Whakahau, sponsored the project to move uh, Ngā Upoko into, into the next phase of developing. Um, so that was a time when they were testing and an approve, an approving an initial list of 500 terms. Uh, the project team was chosen and they were um, Finita Few and Rewiti, Rangi Iria Headley, Judith Keats, Anne Anderson and Robin East. And in 19, in um, not long after, the Mark Standards Office of the Library of Congress uh, validated Ngā Upukutuku as the subject terms that can be shared and applied internationally. So it was the first Indigenous language to be validated by the Mark Standards Office. In 2006, Ngā Upukutuku was launched. And so, um, when the original team members gathered together, the scope was to um, develop these 500 terms. The challenge was to do it under a framework that incorporated the integrity of both the Māori worldview and the cataloguing worldview. And in order for them to understand the hierarchical application of a thesaurus, the National Library um, catalogers explained the file structure to the project team. And so it looked like this, that there was a main topic term, there was a broader term, there were narrower terms, and there was related terms. So the Māori members noticed the structure complemented a Māori worldview in terms of whakapapa, that each Māori word has a whakapapa that connects it to a broader term. And that people, the environment, atua, and the spiritual world are intrinsically connected and related to each other. From here, they would go on to develop a Māori paradigm and framework, one where whakapapa permeates all aspects of Māori culture. And so the Te Ao Māori paradigm looks like this. We have iu, or te kaupapa, which represents how we acknowledge, perceive, and interpret the world we live in from a holistic view. It includes the origin and source of whakapapa. Te kore, taha wairua, the nothingness, relates to the spiritual dimension of a word. In short, we pinpoint its whakapapa and origin. 
we have to be able to determine its relationships to different terms in the thesaurus. From te kore to te po, taha hiningaro, the world of darkness, the intellectual and emotional aspects of a word to determine its standard definition. That is how it may be used in different iwi. And from te po to te ao marama, taha tinana, the world of light, the physical dimensions which involve us as people and how te reo is being used in the world. So it's its context. When applied to ngā upokotukutuku, we are therefore looking at the Māori term in all these dimensions. The model recognises both the traditional and contemporary perspectives, taken not in isolation, but awareness that each aspect impacts upon the other from a whole picture. From there, the job was to create a, a Māori framework to hold the thesaurus. The Whare Nui um, was chosen specifically because the Whare Nui and its surrounding environment, such as the Marae, is considered to be the bastion of Māori culture. The Whare Nui, in some cases, can re represent the body of our ancestors. So the, um, as you can see, when looking at the Whare, the beams that go from either side, or the maihi, sorry, are um, the arms of our tūpuna. At the ends, we have the slatted uh, ends, and these are rapa rapa, or the fingers. And at the top, the kōruru is the head. As we enter into the marae, the left side represents te ao hau, where contemporary meanings are housed, and the right side is te ao tawhito, where traditional meanings are housed. So if we look, we can just see the, the ridge pole at the top, but that represents the tahuhu. It forms the spine or backbone where all life stems from. The tahuhu are the broader terms. Then um, the heke, which descend from the tahuhu, both sides, are the ribs. And uh, the heke are what we are calling the narrower terms. Then we have the battens that connect to the ribs. Oops, sorry, let me just go back. Um, uh, these are the kaho. So these are the battens that connect to the heke that come down as the ribs. And the kaho are the related terms. Just, if I didn't say so, the heke are the narrower terms. So we have the tahuhu, which are the broader terms, the heke, the narrower terms, the kaho, which are related terms. And then the woven panels on the walls, tuku tuku, we are saying are the used for terms. So when we look at that um, file structure again, what we have is um, the kaupapa, we start off with um, the preferred term, and so the term in this case was wakanu. And in Te Reo Māori, we are saying the preferred term is wakatoa. From here, we determine um, its broader term or where it sits in the whakapapa of the, uh, uh, of the thesaurus. So the tahuhu or the broader term for wakatoa or wakanu would be waka. Then we look at its narrower terms um, and we choose uh, what are some narrower terms of wakatoa. And in this case, puhi ariki, which are the feather streamers that go on the wakatoa. Then we look at all the kaho, the related terms. And for this case, wakatangata, which is a, um, resembles a wakanu, but the wakatangata carries people regardless of gender. And then we look at other terms that could be used for wakatoa um, and put those under tuku tuku because we're saying while we can use these, um, we're saying that the preferred term is wakatoa. From there, we look at any reo a iwi or dialectal terms from other iwi. And whakapitao is a uh, ngati parau word for wakapitao. So 
while that is still a reo a iwi, and we're saying that we the preferred term is wakatoa, if you are cataloging in Ngati Parauruhe, um, it's fine to use Fakapito. The same would be um, from the, if you're from the South Island and you're cataloging from the South Island, and they use uh, their cuckoo for things like Monga would be mocha. We're saying use mocha if that's the rohi that you live in and that's the real of their iwi. Okay. So how do we use ngā upoku tukutuku? So um, I'm assuming, and you may, if you don't know, that um, it sits on the National Library website. We can do a keyword search. You can search uh, the alphabet alphabetical list in English or Te Reo Māori. Um, and I think, uh, well, actually, I think that um, most people probably use a keyword search, um, and that's fine. But again, if you wanted to scroll down the alphabetical list, you can. Then there are also the top terms, and there are 21 top terms. And these are the tahuhu, or if you look at it in the Māori worldview, um, the this, this is the, the whakapapa. So each term that we create will sit under one of these top terms or tahuhu. Um, so if you were to do a search, and in this case I've typed in whare, you will get a list of things uh, that come up uh, with the word whare. And then um, your choice is to click on to um, the one that you think is appropriate after perhaps reading a scope note or whakamarama and um, find out where that sits in terms of um, its tahuhu or as well as heke. So um, when we create a term, we can include a whakamarama or a scope note. Um, and for example, atamira, we think about its traditional uh, use as well as it, the um, contemporary use. And um, traditionally, Atamira was used for a platform where a deceased person lies in state. But in contemporary times, it's commonly being used to name a stage or for performance. And that's the information that we would include in there. So contemporary wise, now it's being used um, as a performing stage, Atamira. Um, and so let's look at a step-by-step -step, um, process of creating a term. So a request is made to us um, is the first uh, process. It's made to us, and in this case, somebody requested that we um, create a term for um, a baby bassinet. Um, the reason they would have asked for this was because baby bassinet would not have been in the thesaurus. The book in hand was, and it's not a very clear image, and that's the best I could get, but it, the book was called He Wahakura by Deanne Thomas. Um, the, the next step we do from the request is to determine the correct term in Te Reo Māori. So in this case, the kaupapa would be Wahakura as the term for baby bassinet. So then we... Um, add the English useful, and in this case we're saying use for baby bassinet or cradles. We then determine where it sits in the whakapapa, um, a broader term, or tahuhu. The requester uh, suggested that we use raranga as its tahuhu or broader term. However, when you look at the purpose of a, a wahakura, you um, you can determine that that wouldn't have been an appropriate place to put it, and that really the, the um, wahakura is all about whānau, babies, and hauora whānau. So we have um, chosen hauora whānau as its tahuhu, and it sits under there. From there, we look at narrower terms, and in this case, there were none. And then we look at related terms. And this is where we can add raranga for all types of weaving or kite kawe pepe for baby pack, backpack. So related to um, related to wahakura, anything that relates to that, we would add as a related term or a kaho. We would then look at reo a iwi or dialect. And in this case, there was none. So if we take a look, um, prior to 
uh, upoku tuku tuku being validated, we would see that um, the only way you could search for terms was using Library of Congress subject headings. In this case, we have a book called The Rhythm and Life of Poi. Um, and in order to find that prior to Nga Upoku Tukutu subject headings, we would have had to have done this type of searching, Māori New Zealand people, antiquities, folk dancing, Māori. There is no way that Māori are going to um, uh, even use those terms to search for poi. So you can see why in the 1980s it was so hard for people, for Māori, to be able to search using te reo Māori or find material that they knew would be there that, um, that just did not come up. Um, because, you know, using these terms is not something that uh, Māori would just think of. So now, um, because the it, um, Māori subject, subject headings has been validated by the Library of Congress, POI is now a validated term. So that can be used by any um, library in the world. The great thing about Ngā Upoku Tukutuku is we have a whakamarama, we have a scope note, we have tahuhu border terms. So now that you can also search either mahi a rehia or taonga puoro. Taonga puoro is included because of the sound that the poi makes. Um, and its related term is kapahaka. Oops, sorry. Let's just go back. Let's just fix that up, hang on. Okay. So in the mark view, um, and if you're a cataloger, you'll understand mark. If you're not, mark is a machine readable computer record. And um, so mark uh, is based on a series of codes. And um, Māori subject headings, or Ngā Upoku Tukutuku, the, the code for that is 650 with a seven field. So subject headings is 650. Uh, Māori subject headings is 650 with a seven uh, indicator. And reo was chosen um, as its source entry because of reo meaning in, uh, language, rather. So for this case, um, this book was called Tapu, Removal in Māori. And the subject headings that have been added to it are, are Wairua, Tapu, Noa, Pūrāko, Atua, Tikanga, Tuku Iho. All relevant and appropriate kupu to add to this book. So what terms are included in the thesaurus? Well, we have topical subject access points. Um, that's the most obvious. We have um, form and genre. So we could have a case where we have um, works about maps and example of maps. And both those would have the same heading of mahiri. Um, same with form and genre in, in uh, relation to puka puka whakahua or children's books. There are some name and access points. Um, Atua is definitely included. Um, names like Maui, Tafaki, and even Kupe can be included. Um, and there are some title access points. All are coded in the same way in Mark 650 with a seven indicator. And terms that are not included. Well, most tūpuna names aren't included. Names of individual taonga, um, place names, named events, named whare, named trees, corporate names. Um, also, uh, names of maunga or mountains are not included as well. This is not to say that they won't be, but this is to say that um, during, uh, within the scope of Ngā Upoku Tukutuku, this has not been included. There has been plenty of requests to include, especially named whare, um, at this moment, um, we are not including that, but that's not to say that we won't at some start at some time. Um, and when should they apply? Be a, when should they be applied, basically? And is it just for all Māori, just for Māori material? Um, and then what about the twenty percent rule? So um, basically, we are saying use as many headings as appropriate. So the 20% rule um, is when assigning Library of Congress subject headings, catalogers tend to follow the 20% rule, only assign a heading if at least 20% of the content is, is on that topic. 
but we're saying for Māori material, um, ignore the 20% rule and add what is appropriate for that item, that book. So you can have some books um, that are Indigenous, but have could possibly have chapters with a Māori point of view, like the charter school, or um, books about uh, Māori, about Indigenous education, Indigenous language, all those sorts of things. So you can find some of these books that include um, information in there about a Māori point of view being Indigenous. And these are really important to add um, subject, to, subject headings so that people can find this material. Um, so, yeah, basically, um, really you need to look at the item, have a look to see what material is in it. Um, is it a topic that's, uh, that, you, that you find hard to find information about? And I'll, I'll give you an example. So, um, Nga Te Hoa Aroha, these are amazing books of correspondence between Sir Apirana Ngata and Sir Peter Buck. And, um, I've read some of these, this material, and there's honestly nowhere near enough um, subject headings to cover all the material that's written in it. But um, within these, I found material about Māori cremation, and that is a subject that, honestly, if you could find uh, information about, you'd probably find it on one hand. And I know that there are journals uh, uh, and articles and magazines that have the odd um, uh, piece of information about cremations but it's definitely in these books and first of all um, through the subject headings you wouldn't know that that that, that was in there um, and second of all cremation is not even a word that's on the thesaurus so this is what uh, needs to happen if you um, are a cataloger and you're lucky enough in your library system to have Māori staff um, I encourage you to build a relationship with uh, Māori staff who um, possibly have the opportunity to look through books before uh, they go onto the shelves and just have a look through and make sure that uh, appropriate headings have been included. And this was something that I used to do at uh, Monaco Libraries and Auckland Libraries. And the great thing was all new material, Māori material that I purchased would end up on my desk. I would go through that material have a look firstly to see on the record that, um, that Māori subject headings had been added, and in most cases they were, but then also go through that book just to see if there was anything in it um, that uh, wouldn't, didn't really stick up. So you might have a chapter, um, and within that chapter also you might have perhaps three or four sentences or paragraphs about something that was really hard to find, and in my view that's the valuable information and that's the material the um, subject that should go up on, um, go into the thesaurus. Um, so yeah, be, it, it, I'm encouraging both Māori staff and catalogers to really work together. And the great thing um, we had when I was working at Auckland Libraries was that we had really great catalogers who were really open to adding um, material. And um, so the relationship was just, uh, you know, a really great relationship basically. Um, and I love catalogers. I love the way that they, they um, can look. I think catalogers would make really good research librarians or uh, because they know what they're entering on the system and how it works and how to search better, I think. And so it'd be great to do a session with catalogers teaching people how to, how to properly search. So anyway, um, this is the thing about material that's hard to find. And there are lots of topics in, in Tell Māori that are hard to find, things like um, whai kōrero, uh, lots of information about atua that, uh, you know, they're not so popular atua, like people know tangaroa, they know tāwhiri mātia, but there's all the other um, atua that uh, are hard to find information on. So these are the things that we need to look at within the book to see should we add that. So there's no rule on how many um, subject headings to add, the, the really what we are saying to look at is which are the appropriate headings to add, which are the most appropriate headings to add. Um, and the thing that I do like about um, is that it's a great learning tool. So in this case, um, if you are working at the front line 
and you have a customer that comes up to you and who's Māori and they're saying, I always say, they're saying, uh, you know, they're trying to find some information, say, as an example, on Raranga. And as that frontline staff um, um, librarian, you might not know the what the meaning of these terms are. So the thesaurus is a great way to find out if we take a, just a look at raranga, you can see that if you didn't know what that meant by searching, now you know that it means all forms of weaving. It has its whakamarama, it has its scope note, and so now you can, um, uh, well, now you know that that's what the meaning of the term means. And therefore, you can either go um, enter raranga on the OPAC or go directly to the shelves and show the customer where those books might be. Also, the great thing about this and showing the customer is that you can show them some of the broader terms uh, around raranga, but also heke and kaho or related terms. So while they may have asked for raranga, it could be really what they're looking for is tuku tuku um, or, you know, fatu or fatu kākahu. So this is a great way of showing uh, the customer that there are other terms related or connected to raranga that might help them with what they're looking for. Um, also, it could help you as the librarian by um, doing a search, another search on not only the raranga, but these other terms. Hini uh, nui te po is an example when I talked about atua, some of the atua are hard to find. Well, um, <laughs> If you're, if you're non-Māori or un, um, not used to kupu Māori, you can now see that Hini Nui Te Pō, the scope note is the goddess of death, formerly known as Hini Titama. So again, Hini Titama gives you another um, chance to search for information that might be related to Hini Nui Te Pō that may help the customer. Um, again, um, the tahuhu is atua, therefore we know Hini Nui Te Pō is an atua. Um, and that there are related terms. And when you're on the thesaurus, you can click in, excuse me, you can click onto um, one of these and find out the meaning of these terms as well. Okay, so what if there isn't a term? Um, and we, Te Whaka of Kākau as a working group, we really um, welcome any requests from you. So if you're working on something and nothing um, is out of bounds, so um, really encourage you to email us and let, ask us uh, for the term that you're looking for. Um, include um, some bibliographic details, because what we do is if we can source the the book from the National Library, we will. If we can source the item online, we will. And we will look at that and then make uh, our determination on whether we could add or create a term or suggest that you use other terms. And there have been lots of cases where we've looked at items and thought, actually, you don't need a term for that because the thesaurus contains all this other information that relates more appropriately to the book that you're asking about. So, um, but send the request in and we will always get back to you no matter what whether we've created a term we'll let you know or whether we've made suggestions to add other things we will let you know um, sometimes terms take a, um, a long time for us to create because not everything's that simple and um, if it gets really difficult we will contact some of the experts um, who are uh, proficient in that kaupapa. So if it was somebody, if it was a term regarding something like taonga puoro, then we have connections to people who are uh, matato or proficient in that, um, that subject. And so, you know, why, why, should, why should you do this? Well, in the 2018 census, census there are now 740 4,000 just over people who identify as Māori. That's a 19% increase from 2013. 25.4 years is the median age of Māori, so it's a youthful population. And 26.9% of Māori live in Auckland. The Māori economy now will, in 2018 was $68.7 billion. Um, over 91,000 Māori have stated that they have a bachelor's degree or higher. Um, one in six people it's one in six people in New Zealand identify as Māori and one in five kōrero Māori. 
if you've been watching the news lately um, and are aware of what's been happening, um, we now have a lot of the presenters or non Māori who also are learning to call it all Māori. And that is really, to me, is amazing. So not only will you have Māori more interested in searching in their own language, but it will be that non-Māori will be wanting to search into reo Māori as well, as they get more used to using reo, to um, understanding uh, Māori terms, they too will be searching. And there's, um, so there's an interesting thing that happened to us while we were working down in Wellington on the terms. I met, we met up with some people. One of them was a lecturer from um, Wellington University, and he was a lecturer in Te Reo Māori. And when he asked us about what we were doing down there, and we talked about Māori subject headings, we talked about creating terms, and we talked about um, how you couldn't use it in the 80s or for at least 20, 19, 20 years. He really couldn't believe it. He, he thought we were kidding. Um, he just couldn't believe that you weren't able to go into a library or an institute and use te reo Māori. And for me, right there and then, I thought, wow, this has been a, such a success. You've got people who um, are, were oblivious to the fact that you couldn't search te reo Māori because now they can. So that shows me that um, uh, all those people who started this journey, who are working on it today, who continue to push um, and add subject headings, all the catalogers that do the job. Um, basically, you've, you know, it's, it's a success. What you've contributed to has created a success story. And it was really lovely to hear that, um, you know, things were working. And, you know, but why should we continue? So uh, let me introduce you to my whanau in the top four generations. They were fluent, matato and te reo Māori. Um, basically, that was their way of communicating, um, not in English, but in te reo. Um, and from 1831, my tūpuna, you know, um, was speaking te reo without any trouble at all. By 1933, my father was of that generation where they prevented Māori being spoken in schools. And so he was told... Um, Things like Māori will not get you anywhere. Um, you need to learn English to get on in the world. And those are the conversations that he mirrored onto myself and my siblings. Um, but in my later life, in my 30s, I took up te reo Māori and learnt um, through MIT, Māori Immersion. Um, at that stage when I was learning, my daughter was um, unable to go to Kohanga Reo because she was too old for that by the time we had come home from Australia and I took it up to learn. Um, so that was a bit sad. It, although she could understand some terms, she uh, could nowhere near speak it by the time I was learning it. And then when my mukos came along, I was determined to use te reo as often as I could with them. And, um, you know, they were fantastic, except um, in their little munchkin lives, they ended up moving to Australia and now um, with not having that contact with them, they've lost what they know and I'm, I'm unable really to speak to them. Um, so what I'm saying is if um, it's so easy to lose or to forget. Um, and so those people who contribute to Ngā Upuku Tuku Tuku, um, you're contributing to um, you know, the lives of many people. And so this really, um, the fact that um, Māori language was um, you know, banned from schools or people in, in my father's generation were uh, told they couldn't speak it has really had an impact on the rest of um, uh, his, his descendants, basically. Um, so yeah, I encourage um, you as catalogers, as those who are librarians, research librarians, um, anybody who's who's involved or wants to be involved in um, keeping the mahi going, to please be part of that. Uh, it has an impact. It, it it is great to see that the young kids who go into libraries today um, will have no trouble. They will be able to keep searching. Um, but the the point from here on and is to keep the headings appropriate and keep using them as many as you can, um, make access easier, basically. But um, yeah, that's my kōrero for today. And uh, if there are any questions. We've got one question in the chat. 
right. um, from Kirsty. So these terms are not restricted to assigning just a subject term, but also genre form terms for actual Tonga objects. That's right. So, that wrong? Tonga. Yep, that's right. Ah, uh, yeah. So yes, this has not been clear. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it uh, relates to both genre and form, and there are a lot of. Um, if you can just browse, I just encourage you to browse through Ngā Upo Puku Tuku Tuku, and you'll see that um, you know there are definitely terms in there that you can use for both genre and form. Um, our, I spoke to one of the Auckland librarians at the moment. They're doing a big project um, at Auckland Libraries, and they are, are looking at the thesaurus um, for their collections, for naming their collections, and for looking at uh, genre. So it's good to see that that can that also is helping them. Yep, absolutely, Kirsty. Needs to be promoted to museums and not just libraries. And actually, um, that's really what Ngā Upoko Tōtuku is about. There are museums um, and um, places like, um, oh, I've forgotten the name, New Zealand Television, um, all sorts of different places, iwi as well, who are using the terms. Um, but yes, more promotion does need it. I mean, at the moment, I'm working for Ngāti Tama Oho, so they're one of our local um, iwi. And um, I started a couple of years ago creating their library um, and or archives, as they would like to call it, and um, cataloguing some of their published material, but also looking at all their manuscripts and uh, research material that they have from Waitangi Tribunal claims and adding uh, appropriate Māori subject headings to those, but also looking at um, some of the uh, information as an iwi that they find important, you know, whether it's um, marae, um, wahi tapu and things like that. And at the moment, while you can't include those in the thesaurus, I can include those in some of the notes fields. But working alongside them does bring up some of those issues about how Māori uh, like to search and names is a lot is a lot about the way that they operate. Um, what is recommended for use of macrons? Well, we are saying use macrons. Um, I'm not too sure how that works with Library of Congress subject headings, but in for Kamari subject headings, we are opting to use macrons. If it's not showing when you download and for make, download the updates, it's it's something to do with the way that the system is working. And um, there are other people who can talk about that better than I can because that whole technical side is a little bit uh, much for me. But yeah, we're saying use macrons. Um, however, I work for an iwi who's in the Waikato area. And they don't use macrons; they use double A's. Um, so it's a quite it's a quite a bit of a debate with them because part of them are using it, part of them are not. Um, at the moment, because Māori subject headings is validated and we're using macrons, we are continuing to use macrons. Oh, wow, I can't keep up with all these messages, but hang on. Um, yeah, there's a lot coming through. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not too sure I am on yet. Um, uh. Oh, is there a simplified list for school libraries? No, there's not. This is the only list um, for thesaurus. Um, I'm not even sure what I can say to, rec to rec uh, you know, as a recommendation, except to keep browsing the thesaurus, basically. Um, but I mean, it's a good suggestion to pull out some kupu that um, where we could create lists. It's just that uh, as part of the working group, um, I must say that we are busy, like, um, and uh, we're still working on terms that um, we requested quite some time ago. Um, we don't meet often, and um, it's and you know every time we do a presentation or a course, um, the great thing is that people not realise that they can make more requests, and so are, and that just adds to the busyness in a good way. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's an interesting question, um, Denise, so thank you. Um, oh yeah, so um, 
Gareth, just comments on um, names of items. Um, so it's not that we won't get there. It's just that we can't at the moment because of the uh, requests that we've already got. I mean, named Fari. Yep, named Fari would be good. Named Monga would be good as well. But the scope of the mahi or the work that we have at this stage just doesn't include that. But I think further down the track, once we get through the body, a lot of the body of the work, these things will come more to the forefront. And it's all about um, really pushing that with um, people who fund basically now Upoko Tukutuku to continue really. Um, so at the moment, we're saying we've got this big job to do. It didn't really include that. It could eventually, but we just haven't got there. Um, oh, Charlotte, thank you. For Library um, Congress subject headings, you can't use a macaron unless it's on the authorised form. Thanks, Charlotte. <laughs> I knew somebody like Charlotte would know more about that sort of thing. Um, okay, and thank you to Nina too, who's sort of said the same. Thank you, uh, Mike. Adding 505 notes with chapters headings is an additional means of adding the search. Absolutely, and that's a big help. And I use that a lot with the EOE material as well. Um, uh, definitely because a lot of the material that we have, um, research material we have with the EOE and the contents that they've included is a huge help for them to find exactly what they're looking for, especially if it mentions um, place names, people's names, and wahi tapu names. Where am I getting to? Okay, that's Nina, that's a good question. Going back to adding MSH for non Māori items. For example, a general work on Aotearoa history or a Samoan whakapapalus, would you add the Māori subject headings for this? Um, for example, a general work on Aotearoa. Yes, absolutely. If I was to look at um, a book on Aotearoa history, I'd be looking at that to um, I'd be looking at the book to find out what benefit does it have for Māori. Is there something in there that has a subject that Māori would want to look at? And generally, when you have thing, um, things about general Aotearoa history or New Zealand history, there definitely would be material in there that reflects uh, a Māori worldview. Things like you know uh, probably would find. Um, early history, early Māori history, and there are terms in the thesaurus like kōrero nehe that you could add. There'd be things about probably war, and you could add, um, you know, pakanga as a subject heading. There'd be lots of things in some of those books that would benefit Māori, and I, I would personally add them. Um, a Samoan whakapapa list. You could have the general term of whakapapa. It's the Samoan that's... Um, uh, Somebody asked me this before, was there something that um, uh, could be used for Pacific Island terms? And um, unfortunately, with Ngā Upuku Tukutuku, there isn't. Um, it could be up to uh, Pacifica to create um, their own, in their own terms, under their own framework, the uh, framework that relates specifically to them. Um, okay, we could suggest lots of very specific terms, which are usually too general. To back up, we will get with it. <laughs> okay, so Tosca, cool. Um, explaining a little bit about the process behind the discussion that takes place around suggested kupu. Okay, that's a good question, Tosca. Um, because we have lots of conversations within the working group about this, about creating a term. It's, sometimes it's not as easy as you think. We've spent sometimes a whole day working on one term. Uh, generally, when we pick a list, um, look at the request, then we think, oh, let's start with that one. That looks easy. It's the easy ones that seem to take us the longest time. So, you know, we try not to say let's pick an easy term because we generally there isn't. But what we need to take into an account is a um, how is this word used traditionally? 
and how is it being used today? And then should it be used like that today? Also, we look at how um, kids at Kura are using kupu. And so there are all types of different forms of dictionaries too that either Kura are putting out or iwi are putting out or, um, you know, they're subject orientated, like there's a medical um, dictionary with Māori terms, there are computer dictionaries with Māori terms. Um, we'll look at all, all that information and see if we can find something that's appropriate. The other thing is um, what we, well, we did have is a researcher for the, for the work that we find really hard or we've had so much debate about it, we can't make our mind up on it. What we will do is, is um, connect with experts in those fields and get their advice about it, ask them what they would use, why they would use it, do they think it's appropriate? Um, and then we will also keep um, a, a source of that. So we will keep in the background, in our notes, um, how we got to that word, or who suggested the word, who recommended it, so that if people came back and said, I don't understand why you have that, we can go back to the source and say, okay, we spoke to this person at this time, and this is what they suggest because they are either an expert or in that field or something similar. But yeah, it's not, uh, Tosca, it's not an easy process, but it is an interesting one. And a lot of the times it's, um, the great thing about being on the working group is listening to the, the corridor around um, this, especially with people who are experts in te reo Māori. Um, I'm not one of the experts in te reo Māori, but my contribution to um, Te Whakakaukau is that research, research side of it and thinking about how Māori research and how they um, uh, can access information and uh, trying to make that better and looking at things that are hard to find and, and how we need better access points to those. Um, Kirstie, I don't know if you wanted to speak on um, your comment, because that sounds interesting, about um, uh, being at ATL and spoke to Whakakaka about named objects and developing an in-house process for these. Oh, yeah, kia ora. Kia ora. Um, yeah, I was at Turnbull for, oh, in my previous role for quite some time, but I worked on the development with Ana, Ariana Tikau. Um, we worked on quite a lot in cleaning up our named authorities when we changed collection management systems and we found a huge amount within our pre-existing system of a lot of named authorities where they mixed up whare nui with the name of marae, um, named objects and so forth and we talked to Te Whakakau Kau oh, quite a few years ago now, I wouldn't be able to tell you when. But as a result, um, we decided quite a lot of cleanup. We presented about it at um, uh, AIRAN's conference that focused on um, Māori archives a couple of years ago in Urotorua. Um, but um, so if anyone's interested, but um, you can sort of see those authorities coming through in mainly subjects, also places with named um, historic pa and so forth, because um, ATL has a lot of significant early historical documentation and photographs and sketches and so forth. So, yeah, it was important for us to document those really specific terms um, for access and so forth. Yeah. And I think um, uh, the more people that are looking at that type of work, like I'm, I'm doing a bit of a project working on some photographs and um, the, the, I mean, not the sad thing, but a lot of the time, some of the terms that you're needing for the photographs aren't on the thesaurus. The great thing about being on Te Whakakako and working on the project is that I can make requests for that, that to happen. So, um, and it's a really interesting project. I've, I've just enjoyed it thoroughly um, because, you know, when you're looking at a photograph, it's totally different from looking at um, a piece of work of written information. So it's been, you know, a great opportunity for, for me to do that sort of thing, but also to be able to... Uh, because I know how we work on Te Whakakaukau, how it can, we can you know, work together to include these things. So um, while some of those uh, terms may not already be there, eventually they will get there. Um, it, 
and that would be due to people continuously requesting uh, for help with that or for ex adding extra terms and uh, you know the whole photograph things or the tonga that people have at museums and, and perhaps even iwi um, will help to pr probably progress that the scope that we already have to move ahead onto these other things. Um. Ah, that's interesting, QC. Um, Te Papa have been developing Pacific Thesaurus with our Pacific Cultures team. Well, that's pretty awesome and good to know. Um, and I think that would be something a lots of other people would be interested to, to know as well. I mean, the team at Auckland Libraries obviously is something that they would like, like to know about. So I could pass that on to them. Okay, um, Nina. So, Nina, your questions about um, in the scope notes that Mahi Toy and Hunga Mahi Toy are for Māori art and artists, but what do you do for Māori themed art by non Māori artists? Yeah, good question. Um, I would need to have a look at that. I mean, regardless of the fact that it's a non Māori artist, the Māori um, artwork can still uh, have a, a Māori subject heading. So Mahi's toy can still be applied. I have to think about the whole non Māori artist thing. Charlotte, did you want to, if you're still, if you're available, want to have a talk a bit about that? Yep, I can talk very, very briefly off the top of my head about that. Um, one one of the things about Nga Upukutukutuku is that the scope of the thesaurus as it currently is, is focused on material either in te reo Māori or intended to be uh, it's either about Māori or of, of interest to the Māori community. Um, there are libraries for whom it's entirely valid because of their user group that they apply it to everything. So there are libraries or, or museums or galleries who may want to apply it more widely than the scope of the thesaurus simply because it meets the needs of their particular user group, but that's not the way the terms are devised. And there are some terms that are specifically defined to be really clear that what you're talking about is, is Maori. So in this case, Maori art, Maori artists, um, which isn't to say we couldn't have a request and, and look at, is there an alternative term that that could be applicable yes. um, and, and that's a discussion that could be had but at, at the moment I would say those particular terms have been scoped very specifically to find that material that's harder to find otherwise yeah I'll and leave I, it at that yeah, thanks Charlotte and, and also um, you know if we had the other thing we look at is um, uh, the material that we have regarding the subject. So if you had a book of non-Māori artists who were all producing Māori artwork, well, then it, 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 you're validated enough to, to put in a request to say, could we have a term for non-Māori artists? And then in that case, definitely, that's something we would look at. Um, the, the really important thing that we look at is, um, is do we have items on the subject? Because we have turned down a few requests because there just isn't the, um, the material. Um, you know, so that's the other thing that we look at. So if, yeah, there was books on it um, and there were lots of, and, and there are lots of non-Māori um, artists who are doing, uh, you know, Māori art. Um, and so if there were books on that, definitely we would say put in a request and then we can decide at the next, at, at, you know, the hui 
um, how we go about that. Um, I think we're going to have to bring the questions to the end, unfortunately, because we're getting towards the end of our time. Okay. No but it shows it's a very popular topic. We're going to have to Absolutely. get you back again to talk about it in a bit more detail next year, maybe. <laughs> Absolutely. So That's people good. Have, uh, it's an area people have always got questions about, but most people probably aren't as familiar with it as we should be. So I think it's good for us to get more familiar with it. And it's That's certainly been a great session to have this week with it being Māori Language Week. Absolutely. And, you know, um, the, the more that we can promote it or get it out there, the better everybody will feel about how to use it. So, you know, it's a great opportunity to be on this. And, uh, yeah, hopefully a lot more of us can talk a bit, bit more about it. Yeah. Well, thank you, Rowan, for a great presentation. It was really interesting to see an overview of how Murray Subject Headings was created, how we actually how you add them and how people can use them. I think it's, as we said, it's something we've really got to reinforce so people are just comfortable using it. Awesome. Well, mihi kia koutou katso, and thank you for all the good messages. And, um, you know, um, yeah, I just wonder, can, can I just end on a karakia? Yes, certainly. Okay. Ko tēnei te mihi kia koutou katso, cat's sick, um, especially hoki, uh, Joanna mihi kia koe hoki, ngō reira me inoi tātou. Kia tau, kia tātou katoa, te atawhai o tō tātou āriki a ihu karaiti, me te aroha o te atua, me te whiwhinga tahitanga ki te wairua tabu, ake, 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 amene. Kia ora koutou. Kia ora. Yeah, so we'll make sure the video and any comments is up on the Lianza website. Kia ora.